conversation, we're going to talk about the steps that you need to take to become part of the top 5% of America financially within three years. Let me be abundantly clear. You do not have to be a millionaire to weather the global reset. You don't even have to be rich to weather the global reset, but you do have to be what I like to call financially stable. And this is a situation that I have seen that so many people are not financially stable. I have a story to share with you of someone that I know, someone that um, was working a job, had a retirement plan, and she made a decision to quit that job and then access her 401k before she was, I don't, I think you have to be 59 or something and a half to, I don't know, you know, put that in the comments, what, what age you have to be, but she accessed her 401k early, which triggered penalties. And for about one year and six months, she was free. She had enough money to pay her bills and, you know, live life. And at the end of that period, this is where the financial fragility began. Um, she's now homeless. She's now living in her vehicle. And there are so many people who are in this situation. As long as they're working and they have a consistent income coming in, they're good. They're able to do what they need to do. They're able to pay their bills. They're able to put gas in their car. They're able to buy food. But the minute something happens, they're next thing you know, they're they're homeless. And once again, I speak a lot about starting a business, starting holding companies. But once again, to be repeating myself, you don't have to be a millionaire. You don't even have to be rich. I'm about to outline a blueprint that will help you weather the global reset. I was doing some research and it was um, eye opening. Do you know that only 5% of America has $10,000 in the bank or more? 5%. And once again, and this is something that I've been talking about for years. If you were to go ahead, listen to me and fully fund your emergency fund, if you did nothing other than that, you would be in that top 5% in terms of having cash money in the bank. Once again, average person makes 30 to 35,000. My recommendations is you have a year, not three or six months, but a year of living expenses in the bank. And we're going to talk about how you can make that happen. At that point, if you are in this situation, you've got $35,000 cash money in the bank. Let's have this message. Right now, I'm selling the Intellectual Property School to teach you how to do the things that I do. And there's a lot into it. Now, once again, the price will go up end of July. And just like <laughs> everyone waits until the last minute, I literally had like 100 people cram in on the, uh, the 30th of June. Um, let, let's go ahead and talk about why you shouldn't wait. First of all, it's gonna take you time to put all this stuff together. And the longer you wait, the longer that you're going to delay your future. Because I want to say something to you. I want you to imagine having $50,000 in the bank. And I'm about to tell you how you can do it. In this video that I'm just doing, essentially, if you follow the blueprint, 
Within three years, you can have $50,000 in the bank. What would that do for your life? How would that change your life? Because here's the thing. Most people want to spend money before they get it. This is why credit. I've never started a business on credit. I've never started a business with a loan. And I'm going to teach you how to start an organic business without using your credit cards, without taking out a loan, and to build an organic money. So go ahead, stop wasting time. Stop wasting time. Go ahead and get in it. Tomorrow we've got a training on how to do research. So what you want to do is go ahead and get into the Intellectual Property School. The link is below. You can get the discount. You want to go ahead and get into it because, like I said, it's going to take you some time to put together an intellectual property business. But start now. Stop waiting. Go ahead and get into the Intellectual Property School today. It's in the comment section, first comment, or it will be in the description box. Just go ahead and get in. I guarantee you it's going to change your life. You have a car that is paid off. And you have little to a moderate amount of debt, maybe a thousand bucks worth of debt. Do you understand because you have that $35,000 in the bank, you can pretty much withstand virtually any financial crisis aside, maybe you getting cancer or something like that. Um, that 35,000 would put you in the top 2% of America. So let's go ahead and talk about the blueprint. Once again, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this because there are many people who have this false notion that you have to be a millionaire. And I'm going to talk about that, that you have to be rich to weather the global reset, to weather the recession. And that is fundamentally untrue. Number one, most people are not going to be rich. Just go ahead and put that out there. However, most people, if they make a few wise financial decisions, can be financially stable. This is something within the purview of the average person. And here's the blueprint. Once again, I'm going to repeat this whole process. You have a job. Keep your job. We're not quitting our job. Start a small business on the side. And also, before we get into that, there's a lot of people who talk about millionaire game. Uh, they come on the internet. They're talking about living this millionaire lifestyle. They're talking about making millions of dollars or having millions of dollars or investments. And I feel the vast majority of these individuals are fibbing. I don't think they even have a million dollar brokerage account, but the keyword millionaire, uh, there's a guy in the crypto space named Carl Rumfeld. Rumfeld. He put out that he's a billionaire. This guy went from being a cashier to a billionaire in three years. I don't believe Carl is a billionaire. I just don't think that happened. And also there was someone else that posted that someone who had bought, I forget this cryptocurrency, Shino Ibu, and they became a billionaire off an $8,000 investment. However, what is very funny is since you're able to track crypto wallets, they've not moved any of that money, which makes me feel that whoever invested that $8,000 was probably a developer in the space. And they can't get a, they can't get the money because if they were to start selling it, they would crash the market because they own 13 to 15% of all of the coins in the marketplace. So you, you hear these stories and millionaire, billionaire, these, these, these terms conjure up a certain lifestyle of ease and freedom. I'm going to explain to you how you can get there without being a millionaire, without being a billionaire. Um, before I became a millionaire, and I really don't like talking about that because here's the simple fact. 
99% of the people who are watching my YouTube channel will never become millionaires. It's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. So what point does it make for me to keep talking about that when you can't do it? I'm going to start talking about things that you can do. And this is where we're about to get into the blueprint. Number one, keep your job. You're going to keep your job and you're going to start a small business on the side, which means you will be working more than you're working now. Just just facts. You will be working harder, longer, putting in more hours than you are right now. And what you're going to do when you create this small business, you have a few targets. Your first target is to optimize your money and income that you already have in it coming in to maximize that money. Then the second thing that you want to do when you get this new You want to set up your long-term emergency fund. You now have additional income coming in. And what you don't want to do is to start spending that money and adopt it into your lifestyle creep. So you will have the target. Number one, fund that long-term emergency fund for one year. So if you make 35,000, you want to have $35,000. Now, you could conceivably, if you make 35,000 a year and you're bringing home, say, two or 24,000 a year, that kind of works. But from a mental standpoint, when you know that you have $35,000 in the bank, that changes how you act. You become a different kind of animal. So this is your first goal. Take this money from this new business and fund the long-term emergency fund. Now, this comes up a lot. If I have debt, should I pay off debt before I fund my long-term emergency fund? I'm a little different than Dave Ramsey. I feel that you should establish your long-term emergency fund, your short-term emergency fund, and your family operating accounts before you start attacking debt. And this is why life happens so let's say you're you've got maybe a thousand dollar emergency fund and you're attacking debt and you're spending all your money to retire your debt and then something happens where you can't work for six months you're you're pretty much screwed so this is why i suggest that you establish your long-term emergency fund your short-term emergency fund your short-term emergency fund is five thousand dollars now, why would we establish a short-term emergency fund? In life, things happen. The car breaks down, flat tires, maybe a doctor's appointment, maybe a medical bill. So the short-term emergency fund is a buffer zone to keep your long-term emergency fund from being eradicated by things happening in life. So your long-term emergency fund is money you just don't touch. You leave it in the bank. It's not an investment maybe a money market account or something like that. But this is money in the bank that you can go ahead and touch. And then after you've established your long-term emergency fund, then you establish your short-term emergency fund, and then you establish your family operating account. Now what is a family operating account? A family operating account is an account that has two months living expenses in it so what you can do is when your bills come in, you can just pay your bills. You don't have to wait until you get paid. You just pay your bills as they come in. So what you would do is uh, I will share something with you that I do that took me a while to develop. I'll kind of walk you through some of the steps. At one point, I got to a point where I was saving 50 percent of my income. And then I've got a really, really unique situation. Um, I live on maybe, depending upon what my revenue is, I can be living on 6% of my income or I can be living on 10% or in recent, I've been living on about 30% of my income because my income has come down. Why do I live so far under my income limit? Things happen. So I'm in the habit of living on way less money than I make. 
And this is a habit that you need to go ahead and adopt as well. So now I'm in a situation where, you know, once again, this is a different situation. This is advanced money management tactics. This isn't something that you're going to do in a few weeks or a few months. It took me years to get here. So last year I took a certain sum of money and I put it in my personal checking account. That is money that I can use to live on. So this year I have an account in my uh, business banking where all new money is going into that account. And if I pay myself, this money will go into a special checking account, which I will then start spending next year. So I'm essentially a year ahead, regardless of what happens with the economy, regardless of what happens with my business, I will be able to pay my bills and live quite effortlessly. And this is giving me, you know, and a lot of people say that I'm cocky and arrogant. If that's how it comes off to you, that's how it comes off to you because I'm not worried about inflation. I'm not worried about high gas. I'm not worried about food prices because I have prepared for this year, last year. So what I want you to do is to, once you, let's say you're a person that makes $35,000 a year and you go ahead and listen to me, you keep your job, you start a business on the side and you go ahead and activate these long-term emergency fund, the short-term emergency fund, and the family operating account. So let's say you make 35, you have $35,000 in the bank, you have 5,000 that gives you four, let's say your monthly expenses are $2,000 a month. So that gives you 44 to $45,000 cash money in the bank, not in investments, and we're gonna have that conversation, that's readily available for you to use. This is what's going to happen. Your stress level is going to disappear. It's not going to come down. It's going to essentially disappear because from a mental standpoint, you know that you can deal with any situation that comes your way. You can deal with it quite easily. You can deal with it with no problems. You can deal with it. So your stress level disappears. Number two, this once again, depending upon how much money your small business makes, this can take you one to three years to do. Now, you have developed a certain level of discipline during this process. So once you go ahead and get those funds established, this is the next step. Now, if you have debt, this is when you start attacking your debt. First thing we're gonna get rid of is your car payment. And let's go ahead and just kind of walk through a few scenarios. Let's say it took you two years to get your long-term emergency fund, your short-term emergency fund, and your family operating account together, okay? So during those two years, let's say your side business makes $3,000 a month, $36,000 a year, and your side business is also giving you tax benefits that you weren't getting, like such as the home office deduction. So you're actually making more money and actually um, offsetting your additional income with new tax savings. So you, you have your funds established and let's say you have a car payment. You're in the position right now to throw $3,000 a month towards your car payment. Because what I like to do is take the biggest bill first and throw the most money at it, which is the reverse of the Dave Ramsey snowball method. So you have, let's say, you know, you've got a Toyota Tacoma and, you know, you bought it before you found me and now you owe $20,000. So at $3,000 a month, you will get this paid off in six months. Yeah, 3,000 months, 18, six, seven months, you'll get that paid off. So, and then you move to the next thing. If you have student loans debts, then essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna throw all of this additional money at your debt as hard as you can, because what's gonna happen is, and I want you to understand, you have, 30 to $45,000 in the bank cash money. 
So let's say you're on your, your debt retirement journey and you get sick. What you can do is negotiate with your creditors. Hey, I'm sick. I need to pause this. I need to reduce the interest. And if you're ver verifiably sick and you have proof, they will work with you. So once again, um, this is why I say do it this way, because you want to have attitude money in the bank. Uh, this is one of the reasons, like I said, I mentioned that people think that I am cocky or arrogant because I live a different lifestyle. And these are some of the advanced techniques and tactics that I teach in my course, because when you're at a point where you can get anything you want, and this is something that will happen because after you get your emergency fund set up, this is gonna put you in the top 2% of Americans. For you to have thirty-five to forty-five thousand dollars cash money in the bank will put you in the top two percent of Americans. And once again, like I said earlier, you're not a millionaire. You're not a millionaire. So you don't need to be a millionaire to ride this thing out. You just need to be financially stable and solvent. So once you do this, and once your debt's retired. If you choose to invest, this is the time that you can invest because at this point, let's say it took you four years to get your, your funds established and get your debt paid off. And now your side business is doing $4,000 a month or $50,000 a year, uh, 48, you know, let's say 50,000. You know how much money you can invest Within two years, you would have a six figure portfolio. Now, why is that important? Don't take my word for it. Do the research. The average 62 year old has a brokerage account with $183,000 in it. So if you go ahead and do this and then you're putting, let, let's just go ahead and get into it. Let's see. Investment calculator. So let's see, starting amount is $4,000 a month and you're getting a return of 6% for 10 years and you contribute $4,000 per month. In 10 years, this gives you $662,000. Let's move it up to 20. And this is with a 6% return. Nothing crazy. So you do this for 20 years, you would have $1.8 million. Now let's kind of go back to 10. And let's say you were getting 10%. Consistently a 10% yield. In 10 years, $4,000 a month, will give you $830,000 invested and your contributions would be 480,000, but your interest earned would be 346. So let's do this for 15 years. So 15 years gives you 1.6 million. So an additional five years makes a huge, huge difference. And this puts you in the position where you can become an investment millionaire. So this is the blueprint. This is the thing that I'm telling you that if you do this, first of all, let's just talk about before the investments. Year two, I, I just want you to sit back and I want you to think, what would it be like to have $45,000 cash money in the bank and no debt, no car payments, no credit card debt, no student loans? You would feel rich. Because if you want to take a week off, no big deal. This gives you options and see the average person, because when I found that stat out that only 5% of America has $10,000 in the bank or more, I was literally blown away because $10,000 is not a lot of money, but 
it can be the difference between um, disaster and prosperity. It can be. So that's the plan. That's how you can get into the top 5% of America within three years. And this is something that the average person can do. It's not um, a huge thing. It's, it's a matter of taking time and having a certain level of discipline. So this is how, once again, how the average person, once again, you're not becoming a millionaire. You're not becoming a millionaire. You're just becoming extremely financially stable. And let's just go ahead and take the conversation a little further. Let's say you took that $4,000 and paid off your house. So you have $45,000 in the bank. And let's say it takes you because let, let's, let's go ahead and do the math. Um, you got $50,000 a year. And let's say your house, you owe $200,000 on your house. So in four years, you've got $45,000 in the bank. You have a paid off house. You have no debt. Guess what? You can withstand virtually anything that happens to you being in that position, having cash money in the bank, having a paid off house, because like, uh, I'm going to tell you a story about my neighbors. Uh, my neighbors moved in and, you know, we used to talk because believe it or not, there are, ma there are many conversations that rich people keep the knowledge to themselves. They're, they're not. No, 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 no. In my experience is. The wealthier people are, the more they share information. And, you know, these were my neighbors and we we're talking and they had paid cash for their house. And when they were just sitting around and I was like, you know, even though I live in this house and I drive a Porsche, it really doesn't take that much money to live. And they kind of look, you know, let's say, you know, since our house is paid for, it takes us maybe twenty five hundred, three thousand dollars to pay bills. And here's the, the point that I'm driving home. If you have $45,000 in the, in the bank, you have a paid off car, you have paid off house, your living expenses will shock you. When you get to the point where you're living a life with, without a lot of bills, um, if I didn't live where I live, and I, I saw a comment talking about I lived in the hood because you know rent's throwing money away. Once again, if you don't know how to play the game, it could be um, my rent is giving me a tax deduction. So um, one of the things, if I didn't have this rent, um, my health insurance is 450. My life insurance is 400. I could live, pay all my bills, 2000 on car insurance and stuff, 2000, 2,500. I could pay all my bills. Cause I don't have any debt. I don't have, you know, I don't, I don't have, I don't have normal people debt. I don't have car payments. I don't have credit card debt. Like I treat my uh, credit card like a debit card. So I don't, I just don't have a bunch of bills. So other than this place where I live, I can live quite cheaply. And this is one of the things, uh, like I said, you know, everyone is talking about invest, 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 invest. I feel that investing without having this foundational situation in place, your long term emergency fund, your short term emergency fund, your family operating account and no debt. I feel that investing is stupid because if you have credit card debt, student loan debt, anything other than a mortgage, your investments, the yields you get from your investments will pale in comparison to the interest you're paying on this debt. And this is why I feel it is stupid because like I just gave you a blueprint. If you were to do that and not invest and have your business that made you, let's say, let's just go way into the future, way into the future. Let's say this is 20 years in the future you have no debt, you got money in the bank, you, your house is paid off, 
and you got a business that at this point is making you nine thousand dollars a month and you've automated you've hired people you work 10 hours a week and you have uh you have no you have no debt and you have a business that's generating you nine thousand bucks a month after taxes, let's say, you know, and expenses, let's say $6,000, $72,000 a year. And you have no investments. Guess what? You can live quite well. You can live quite well. And this is why I feel that the, because once again, I'll explain to you why the investment thing is something that is marketed to you in a manner that if you're not investing, the marketing indicates that you're stupid. This is something that all of the smart people do. This is something that all the hip people do. And I have friends who have no investments in the stock market, who are multimillionaires. My friend who owns these apartment complexes, he didn't have any stock. He's got a lot of real estate, but he didn't have any stock. He's like, I cannot deal with the stock market going up and down. He's like, I buy these apartment complexes year after year, they go up and now my rents go up and I have another friend who has a business. He has no investments. See, you're being marketed this to you as some way to get rich. And once again, over a period of time, investments can make you rich 20, 30 years, but starting a small business can make you rich in three to five years, three to five. So you can take the Lambo or you can take the horse and drawn buggy. The choice is yours.